All right. Uh, so good morning. Uh, my name is Evelyn Diaz. I am the literacy program manager for the City of Commerce Public Library. I'm so excited uh, to have these kind of Q&A chats with different types of students. And so uh, today, our main focus is going to be with Janine, and this is a chat with a transfer student. Uh, so Janine, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to go ahead and let you introduce yourself. Um, if you can give us your name, um, the school that you attend, what year you are in, and your major. Hi, good morning. Um, so my name is Janine Mancilla, and I attend Cal State LA and my major is anthropology with a minor in Mesoamerican studies. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for that. So we're just going to jump right in. This is going to be a conversation. I just want to know a little bit more about your experience and anything that we can take from it. So my first question to you is, you took a more non-traditional route, but a common route that a lot of students choose to take and attended a community college, and then you transferred into a four-year. So can you tell me a little bit about your decision to do that and your experience in doing that? Yeah, of course. So when I was in high school, I would hear the word college a lot. As a senior, you, your teachers and counselors start telling you about college, you got to apply to college and you got to have this, this and that. Um, but I think they mostly emphasized on a four year college. I didn't really hear them talking about um, a community college. And as someone who didn't have an idea at all as to what they wanted to study, I felt that community college gave me that opportunity to explore different um, di different fields of study. Um, so you have a plan, of course, of classes you need to take in order to either transfer or just get an AA. Um, but what I like about it is that you, like I mentioned, you can explore different topics. You don't have to just stick to, to a certain, um, to certain classes. So I like that you're able to explore. You can do like Chicano studies. You can take a few science classes because they can all meet those requirements of either transferring or getting your AA, but you're able to, to dabble into different subjects to know what you're really passionate about. Yeah, and, and I think I'm gonna add to that a little bit because right now when you were talking, I was like, yeah, you're absolutely right. So, and students might not know this point, right? So when you attend a four-year college, uh, sometimes uh, you don't necessarily have to go in with what major you're going to do, um, although it is beneficial to you have a, an understanding of what you want to study. Um, but I will say that when you attend a four-year, there's some four-year universities that cap you out on how many classes mm -hmm. you can take because they're not looking for you to be there five, six years. They exactly. want you to take the classes you need and then graduate. Mm -hmm. um, whereas at a community college, um, they give you a little bit more freedom to mm -hmm. kind of explore different subjects to kind of figure out what it is that you want to do. So, yeah, that's very true. I, I feel like there's less pressure into kind of getting out of there. Mm -hmm. um, although it is supposed to be kind of like a two year process mm -hmm. for you to either transfer, get your associates. Um, yeah. There's not a lot of pressure for you to to get things done and, yeah. and move on. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, good point. Um, when when you were navigating the community college system, when you were already at the community college level, um, is there a specific person or is there a specific like thing? Was it like an app or a website that kind of helped uh, guide you or that you found support in? Um, so as like a first generation um student it was kind of hard to navigate at first because I was somewhat the first within my immediate family to go to college mm -hmm. so I had to kind of figure out like how do I go about this because my parents don't know how to navigate this um it was just all about like seeing who amongst my circle of friends were attending a community college that knew their way around mm -hmm. either the specific community college I went to or knew the process of it. Um, and so I guess a little bit of background, I was like in and out of community college for a while because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. So 
when I first started, nothing was online. You had to go into the college to fill out like the application and all these forms. Now it's a little easier because everything's online. So you can do like a quick search on, on their websites and, and everything's easier, right? Um, back mm -hmm. then I had people actually go onto the campus with me and guide me to like the specific offices. Um, so that helped a lot. Um, once I was enrolled, it helped to, to talk to your teachers. They stress mm -hmm. this a lot, like counselors and teachers, they stress a lot, stress it a lot for a reason because they're literally there to guide you aside mm -hmm. from being your professors. They can become your mentors. If, if you've been taking classes, uh, like same classes with the same professors, they, they will get to know you and the, and professors love that. They love being able yeah. to guide you. They love being asked questions, even if it has nothing to do with the subject, but they're there for you. So I would say check in with the circle of friends that you have or make friends in that same space, but also talk to your teachers and your counselors because they, they're very helpful. Yeah, I agree with that. I love that. I think that point that you hit saying being a first generation, uh, college student, you really, you know, your parents are going to support you, your family's going to support you, but they really don't know the process, right? But the folks that are already in the institution can definitely help you. I love that. Yeah. All right. Um, was applying and getting accepted into a four year as a transfer student, do you feel like that experience was easy or was it difficult for you? Um, I would say it was overwhelming because there's all these deadlines you need to keep in mind. First, there is the deadline of filling out like that graduation application. Like if you don't fill that out, I don't think you can move on to the next step. So mm -hmm. um, what made it easier was checking in with the counselor. Um, I also would go through the I get see myself. So I knew more or less um, when my graduation date was coming up. But counselors really helped out with, with the dates and with all the steps. And then once you apply, um, it made it less overwhelming and more easy. The fact that there is a whole transfer center available to you where you can go, they have computers, you can apply yourself, but there's people walking around, there's staff walking around, making sure um, that you're not stuck. Or if you need help, you just ask them and they're very, very helpful. So the process wasn't too bad because it didn't feel like Although I was doing it myself, it didn't feel like I was completely alone. I was in a room with other students going through the same thing. Um, one thing that did help me is having all of my transcripts on me because you do need to kind of input them one at a time or at least like the, the transferable classes. I don't know if they call them like the golden four or something like that. Uh -huh. or it's like your math, your English, your speech. Um, that you really have to have an input. So at least for me, that helped keep me organized. The fact that I had my transcripts on me, whether you have them written down or you have them printed out or whatever. Um, Cause I feel like that's the main part of the application process that you really need to, to pay attention because if yeah. you miss a class, then it can throw off everything. And according to the application you might not be ready to to transfer but yeah you know in reality you are you just like missed one class yeah um but other than that um the waiting part i want to say was like the most stressful because you just want to know you know yeah and so know. you mentioned so let me do follow up yeah you mentioned the i get see. can you clarify for students who might not know what the I get oh, yeah. is and the importance of yes. following it. <laughs> so in community college, the I get C is basically like the sheet of paper that kind of guides you. It's it's basically, yeah, a guide of if you want to transfer to a Cal State or, or a UC, there's an I get C for that. And it's basically like the classes that you need to complete so that you're ready for transfer. And for the most part, you can choose any classes to take, which is the beautiful part of community college. There are, like I mentioned, the golden four, which are classes you have to have, which is mm -hmm. English 101, speech, your math. Um, I forgot what the fourth one was. Oh, I think yeah. it's your science, like a science with a lab. Mm -hmm. um, 
so it's, it's pretty easy because it's it's very easy to understand and it'll tell you like from humanities you need like this amount of units and then you can yeah. go and circle like okay I want to take these or you can make your own schedule instead of always having to go to a counselor um, which makes it a lot easier and the awesome part is that if you do one class for humanities it might count in your arts as well so it's like instead of taking two different classes you just do the one yeah. so it's easier for you to keep track of your process mm -hmm. whether you want to go to uc a cal state or they also have i believe it's a general ed like to get your associate's degree mm -hmm. so it's just easier to track your process um yeah. so you know yeah. you're at, you know what you need to take without necessarily having to see a counselor um of course they're always there for you but as far as my experience, it was easier for me to have that piece of paper to know exactly what I need mm -hmm. and feel more comfortable in like feeling ready to transfer um, and just take the next step. Yeah, nice. And so now that we're talking about applying for school, um, how many schools did you apply to? And then how did you end up um, picking or choosing Cal State LA? Yeah, so I applied to three, um, and I guess another good thing to know is that during the application process, there is a fee waiver that will pay for up to four colleges um, of your choosing. So mm -hmm. I only ended up doing three, um, and out of the three, I got accepted into two. Um, unfortunately, the school I really wanted to go to didn't accept me. Um, and that's another thing about majors is that if your major, if they don't accept you, it's not necessarily because you don't qualify. It's just that your major may be impacted. So mm -hmm. they, can't, they can't have more than whatever amount of students be in that program. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up going with Cal State LA because they also have the minor that I wanted to do, which is Mesoamerican Studies, as I mentioned earlier. Um, once there i realized how great of a program they have for my major as well um they have a lot of great resources for anthropology majors um which i really like and aside from that it's it's a lot closer to me um mm -hmm. which at first i was okay with driving further out for school but now that i actually have to go there this semester it's a lot easier. I don't yeah. have to be stuck in traffic, which I think yeah. is a really big factor, especially if you're a full-time student, your time is very, very precious. Mm -hmm. um, if you're working, um, it'll make sense to have your school close to where you work. Um, because again, time, you don't wanna spend an hour or so in traffic unless you're dorming there. So all of that played in my head when I was choosing the campus that I was going to end up going to because um, it would just make things a whole lot easier for me um, as a as a student full-time student who's also working yeah. and juggling both of those at the same time yeah that's it that's a good point I think sometimes we're kind of like oh it's not that far you know mm -hmm. but when you have to be in class in the yeah. middle of the day or you know in the evening when there's all the traffic definitely um the, the commute yeah mm -hmm. the commute makes a difference um just wanted to ask what do you think are some of the were some for you right what do you think were some of the benefits of attending a community college um well aside from being able to explore different subjects um going in as i mentioned earlier i kind of took a while to get out of community college. I was like in and out for a few years because I didn't know what I wanted to study. I changed mm -hmm. my major maybe like five times or something. Um, I started off with, I do wanting to do environmental science. And then I'm like, oh no, I wanna do Chicano studies. No, wait, I wanna do this and that. So like mentioned before, it's a great space to explore different subjects. If you're not mm -hmm. sure, um sometimes you do have the pressure of like okay you need to like figure this out already right but yeah but that's also just a beautiful thing about community college that you can explore different subjects um I was not the only one that changed their majors frequently or all the time and also you don't need to like declare a major either 
So mm-hmm. that's, that takes pressure off, right? Uh, versus yeah. like a four year, you can't just easily say like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do something else. Yeah. Um, so that was very beneficial to me. I also got the feel of what college is going to be moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of reading, a lot of reading <laughs> once you transfer. <laughs> um you know and so community college is a great way like if you're not too sure that you want to be in school in the first place Mm -hmm. I think it's a great space to kind of dabble in to see what you would potentially be getting yourself into um aside from that you just meet a lot of people within that are like in the same type of situation as you there's a lot of first generation students going into college into higher education for the first time mm-hmm. so it was a great support system because all the friends i made were in the same boat we were all just trying to figure out what we were going to do how to navigate this on our own because we had no one else besides you know teachers and counselors to guide us right. um, so it was great to have that support system yeah that's awesome yeah. Um, with that said though, right? Like, what do you think were some of the challenges in attending a community college? Um, I want to say, at least for me, um, I guess going back to, to high school and applying and stuff, I, I guess I didn't really have like a set path and this might sound funny, but I was like, I'm in college, but I don't know what I'm doing because, Mm -hmm. you know, you just grow up, your parents just tell you like, go to college, go to college. And you're just like, yeah, yeah, for sure. But like, you don't, you don't know what you're doing. Um, You know, there's no guidance from them as to like, again, like what to study or what your interests are. They just want you to go to college and push for like a better life for you. Right. Um, So I would say that was like, a struggle or a pressure because um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And it took me a few years um, to figure that out. And I think it's great if you're younger to do this. Yeah. Like, it's okay to be in and out of community college. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes you just wanna like get things done quickly. And, mm-hmm. but unfortunately you just don't have everything figured out. Yeah. So I want to say that was my main struggle. Financially, you have financial aid. So that's great. You don't have to worry too much about it. Um, community college is also just a lot cheaper mm-hmm. to go to, especially if you don't know what you're doing or what you want to study. Yeah, It's great. It's a great space for that. Um, so I would say that was my, my main challenge, not knowing yeah. what I wanted to do, the pressure from my family to like, you know, have everything figured out. Yeah. Um, during that moment. Um, but yeah, it's okay. You know, <laughs> yeah. a little bit. School's always gonna be there. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, so speaking about right, like figuring out what to do and then transitioning over to a four-year once you figured out what it is that you wanted. Um, how has that transition been for you going from a community college to a four-year? So I transferred a year ago during the pandemic and at first I I didn't mind that transition so much because I thought well everything's going to be online it's going to be easier Mm -hmm. um, to study to do your classes Um, you can be in your pjs it's fine actually technically you can still go to campus (laughs) and it's fine It's fine. Really. Yeah. <laughs> you won't be the only one. But it just felt a lot more comfortable. <clears throat> um, but of course, after a while, it was your room and your home is maybe not the best space to deal with college plus like a pandemic. It became yeah. overwhelming because I, as much as I wanted to, I couldn't go somewhere else to study. I couldn't go to a library or a coffee shop my home was literally the only place with wi-fi that i that i could be you know to to study and do my work um so my experience is a little bit different from others probably um because that was my main challenge the the pandemic not being able to to have that like physical um oh what's the word 
um, like relationships with, mm -hmm. with students. A lot of the times in classes, professors don't care whether you have your camera on or not. So you don't even know who the heck is in your class. Yeah. You, just see the, you just see their names, right? So I wanna say maybe like the first semester, I felt like it was okay. After that, I just really, really wanted to have that interaction, like physical interaction. Right. Um, Cause it, it just, it was just a, a, like overwhelming to have to do everything online. And professors are there to help you. They'll, they'll schedule Zoom meetings. Um, they'll even give you their cell phone numbers. You can call or text them, but it's not the same as having them right in front of you physically. So as that was my main challenge or now it's a little better because we're able to be on campus now, yeah. although all most of my classes are online, but um, transferring during a pandemic was very challenging. Um, I, I guess at some point I kind of felt stuck because it's like, you know, you're, you're, you're so frustrated or I should, maybe not frustrated, but um, you, you're full-time or at least in my case, I, mm -hmm. I was going to school full-time um, and it just got very overwhelming. I felt like I needed, I needed to breathe. I needed to, you know, be in a different space, but I couldn't really go anywhere. Um, yeah. Aside from that, living with family, they're doing their own thing. So you hear the noise, you hear this and that, and it became very hard to concentrate. Yeah. So you kind of just have to figure out a way to block out all of the noise, yeah. um, which is what I, I had to do because it's like, I, I couldn't do anything about the situation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's been my experience transferring. Um, it's very different, right? I think it's very different. Not, not knowing my campus, basically. Yeah. Like, you know, well, the, I mean, I guess, so then it, it it's almost like this year will be your first year really yeah. there because. So, exactly. So yeah. last week was my first time on campus and it just felt so weird. Yeah. I did not know where anything was at. Yeah. Um, I looked everything up online before, so I knew yeah. at least like where to park, where my class would be. Mm -hmm. um, but just being on campus felt so weird. Like. <laughs> Is this real? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. It, it was a bit of drive somewhere. <laughs> I have to drive somewhere. Um, I'm on campus. I don't know anyone, and and going in, I noticed a lot of students already knew each other. So yeah. it just felt like, am I the only one? I yeah. don't know anyone. I don't know where anything's at. You know, I had yeah. to ask around a lot for directions or or to figure out where things are, but. Um, um, but yeah, that's been my experience so far transferring during these weird times. Um, yeah. But it's been overwhelming, but definitely not impossible. You just have to have some structure. And, yeah. 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 Speaking of structure, um, <laughs> are, do you have any tips for a student who chooses to attend a community college first? Um, my tips would be... Um, just get to know people, get to know. This is something I didn't really do. Um, I've, I've basically been working my whole life since like high school. So to me, being in college, it was always like, go to classes, boom, get out, go to work, go home, do homework. But what I wish I would have done more was make friends, talk to folks around you in your classes, you don't necessarily need to be friends with them, but it really helps to study with them because you you can um, you'll retain things faster or you'll like if something doesn't make sense, someone else can help you with that, even if it's not the teacher, um, yeah. which is great. Right. Teachers have more than two classes sometimes that they're teaching, so they may not always have all this time to spend with you. Um, you can, uh, like I mentioned before, you can always email them, right? You know, and they'll get back to you. But it's always great to have those connections in classes. Um, if you miss a class or if you just weren't paying attention, you can always text them, like, "Hey, what was the assignment?" Or I didn't right. go to class. Did I miss out on anything? Can you pass me the notes? Yeah. Um, so that's something that I would really recommend: make friends or just at least keep in touch with those in your classes. 
And then, I mean, if you have a set major, you'll kind of see the same students in your, in your classes, which yeah. is great because then you can just say, hey, I'm also taking this class. You wanna to study together, we can meet up, or maybe you can plan on taking a difficult class together. Yeah. Um, and then you can kind of know like what are your strengths and weaknesses and then compare that to the other person and then you know you just kind of merge those together and you're like okay I'm good at this you're good at that let's help each mm -hmm. other out um, that's basically you know don't I don't say not to take it seriously take it seriously <laughs> but just know that you have that flexibility of of stepping away if you need to and then coming back when you do when you feel yeah. ready. Because if you're in there, which is something that I did at some point, I was in there just because I was told that I needed to go to college. And that was like my option, right? And of course you don't need a degree to be successful, but mm -hmm. that was my, I guess one of my, my issues was like, I'm here, but I don't necessarily know what the heck I'm doing. So it was, I felt comfortable enough to step away when I needed to, when I couldn't, mm -hmm completely focused and then coming back when I felt like I could actually do this and be serious about it. Um, so like I said, community college is very flexible, um, but I would emphasize on making those connections. Yeah, also yeah. with professors, because once you do transfer, um, depending where you decide to go to, um, UCs do ask for recommendation letters, I believe. Mm -hmm. Cal States don't, so Cal States are a bit um, their requirements aren't um, as much as the UC. So, mm -hmm. but regardless, I would say make those connections with professors as well and your counselors because you're gonna want and you're gonna need recommendation letters in the future, whether it's for transfer or for scholarships or for internships, you know, or, or whatever you need them for. Um, that and they can, professors know other professors in like Cal State's yeah. University, so they can easily help you connect with other professors to get you into a certain program or into internships or whatever it is that you need. They're there to help you yeah. and guide you as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate all those tips. And I think I, I do like that you hit on, you know, the fact that like, sometimes you feel like the school you're just there to go to the school but you need to foster relationships with people whether it's you know albeit students um professors or counselors because and even what you were mentioning right now with that said right like maybe you don't know what the best school is to study a certain subject but teachers are connected and they can say, you know, I know they have a great program at this school. You can get that kind of information for your professor. So that's, that's a really good, um, that's a really good example, a really good tip actually. Um, so my last question for you before we end is, are you involved in any extracurricular activities, clubs or sports, whether it's at, on campus for the school or even outside of that? Um, so on campus, I am a part of the anthropology club. There are two, there's one, an anthropology club for social change. And then there's just a, a general anthropology club. Um, you don't necessarily need to join a club that, that goes with your major. Um, you can join any club that you feel drawn to. Um, I've also, I'm not in the club now, but I was the past semesters in Mecha and Mecha is mm -hmm. really great because um, you don't have to be like into Chicano studies or being studying Chicano studies or Latin American studies to join, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a great club, you know, to get to know people, they'll, they'll help you out with resources um, and just in general, you make friends, which is great, right? You want you want to make friends that are going through the same <clears throat> process as you because you can help. Yeah. I know I've mentioned this a lot already, but because it's important to have friends within that circle, right? Because they know yeah. what you're going through. They know you have finals coming up. They know all of these things. So they're very supportive. Um, so those are the three clubs that I'm that I'm in right now. Outside of school, I am a volunteer for the East LA Women's Center. I am a certified 
advocate for them. So I went through a training process and what I basically do now is just answer the hotline, the 24 hour crisis hotline mm -hmm. um, for them. I take down reports, I send them in. Um, and that's basically what I do. I'm like the middle man between the center and resources and and the person that that's calling. Do you yeah. think that your involvement in, you know, either clubs at school or even outside of have helped or like hindered your education? I think they've helped, um, especially the clubs on campus. When you meet, um, obviously it's all been through Zoom. So it's, mm -hmm. it's been a little different. And I've seen like the decrease in amount of students joining clubs, at least in like mm -hmm. the three that I've, that I've joined. But um, I love how these folks have been so creative, you know, yeah. seeing that everything has to be on Zoom. We've played games on it, um, which to me was a lot of fun. Because obviously yeah. you have to download an app and you played this game. I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but it was great. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. But it, it's just something to take your mind off of school, you know, like it's still part of school, but you're not thinking about like, oh, I have to do this homework, I have to do this. You're not really talking about that. Mm -hmm. You're just getting to know each other, you're having fun, you're planning events, whether they're through Zoom or maybe you, some might like mean outside of campus, you know, but I think it, it helped a lot because it's, obviously I'm not the only one going through this, um, this phase of like transitioning in, during the pandemic and having to go to school during a pandemic and everything being on Zoom. So to me, it was great to have like another support system, someone who also knows what I'm going through and yeah. it's like we can all talk about an event and it's just that safe space to kind of let go of all of that and just yeah. say like, okay, you're also going through this. Like, what have you been doing that's helped you get through, through the semester? Or right. what have you been doing if you live at home with family? What do you do to cancel out all the noise? Or like, what boundaries have you set? Yeah. So you kind of need to in, yeah. in this like circumstance um, because sometimes family doesn't know boundaries and they'll just like come into your room and they're like, what are you doing? Or this <laughs> you know, you're in the middle of, of class. So um, at least to me, it helped me a lot to to know that I'm not the only one and to have that space to talk to others and just kind of forget about classes for a moment and yeah. just either talk to each other or play a game and it was great yeah yeah so I really recommend clubs as well it looks great on your college applications whether you're mm -hmm. a community college student transferring or if you're transferring I mean if you're going into like a master's program or even scholarships. It's really, mm -hmm. It looks really great on scholarships, knowing yeah. that um, even if you don't have like a leadership position, but it yeah. just looks good that you're involved. Yeah. In, yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna mention that too. I think the opportunities from being a part of a club or an extracurricular activity, or even a, a sport, right? Um, it shows that you're being committed to something else other than education. And I think ultimately finding that balance when you're a part of different things um, is going to carry out into your life and is going to be really helpful. And whether it's, you know, whether you hold a leadership position or you're not, I think just like the experience, the exposure and the networking that you do when you're a part of these things kind of like really play out. And they go a long way. And all of these clubs have an advisor, which is a professor. Um, mm -hmm. It'll mostly be the professor of like whatever subject it is. So if it's anthro, mm -hmm. it'll be like a professor in the anthro field. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just great. Prior to the pandemic, all these clubs would have outings, would have trips and stuff. I know mm -hmm. I kind of doubled into the geology club in community college. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not, a geology major it's great because they have a lot of camping trips mm. that you don't pay very much for they have like right. stuff so it's it's great even if you're not into the subject but you get to have these experiences you know yeah like if you're into nature that'd be great you know if you've yeah. never gone camping but you want to experience it it's great because they know what they're doing you know you can have those experiences um without spending so much money and worrying about all the planning because they'll do it for you. Right. But you end up learning something, you know, out yeah. of it. You know, whether, like I said, whether it's your major or not, 
it's great. I would just say join clubs, whether it's on campus or or do an activity outside of campus because it's very rewarding. Yeah. And like I said, it'll look great on your transfer applications, on scholarships for internships or or whatever it is that you're applying to. Um, but I think it also can open up doors for you for jobs. Um, that and you and you kind of figure out like, oh wait, I really like doing this. I think mm-hmm. I want to get more into this or or maybe it's something that has to do with your major and you realize you don't really like that. Maybe you can, you'll end up changing majors or you'll just say, I thought I'd like this. Like for example, anthropology, there's four different fields in anthropology. Mm-hmm. Um, you can do an internship or volunteer in one of those fields that you may think you like, but once you get there, it may not be your thing. And that's mm-hmm. great, right? Because then you can say like, okay, so I want to do anthropology, but maybe I won't do archaeology. Maybe I'll try doing like cultural anthropology or something. Um, so it's also just experiences. Right. You know, yeah. that, that can help with um, your decisions as far as like your major or what you really want to do. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, because whether it helps you figure it out and you lean towards it or lean the other way, either way, it's a good experience because you know now whether you like it or not, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was my last question, Janine. Um, Before we go, I do want to let you know that we really appreciate you joining me for this conversation. You've made a lot of really good points. Um, I think, you know, being a transfer student is something that is common, uh, but I think it's something that's not commonly spoken about. And I think you've given us some really good tips. Um, You've talked about some of the challenges, uh, you know, your experience, and I really do appreciate it. Um, Again, thank you so much for joining the conversation, and I wish you nothing but luck as you really begin your first year as a transfer student, so, (laughs) but thank you so much. Um, One thing I just do want to say, very lastly, is I am older than most folks transferring, you know, um, and I want to say age does not matter. So whether you're in your early 20s, mid 20s, late 20s, even early 30s, and you're barely starting out, whether it's community college or not, age does not matter. And I feel like I wish someone had told me that um, during my process, because you will see, obviously, younger students, but you will also see older students. And yeah. I guess to me, it was very much like, oh, I'm already too old. Like I should have had this done. I should have. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it would have been great to have done this in my early 20s, you know, because it's a lot harder, but not impossible as an adult mm-hmm. because you have other responsibilities, but it's never too late, Yeah, you know, which is my point. So if you want to yeah. go to school and you're in your late 20s and you're even barely starting community college, do it because there's no age limit you can still get scholarships no matter what age you are. You can still get financial aid. There's still help out there. It just might be a little bit more difficult because we're dabbling all these other responsibilities, um, mm-hmm. but it's not impossible and you can still do it, you know, even if you're older. Yeah, I love that. I love to end it on that note. Yeah, you're absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, Janine. Thank you, Evelyn.